It is great to have you on the Family Goals podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. I'm Joel and House, and on this podcast, we want to encourage you to grow closer to God, to strengthen your marriage, and to inspire your family to reach its highest potential. In this episode, we dive into Luke 840 and the miracle of the woman being healed by touching Jesus' cloak and how nothing is impossible for Jesus. Here's the conversation. So I was telling you, I was telling you a few weeks ago that I finally figured out how to do the surfer behind behind the boat. Yeah. You know, where you, where you throw the rope and you get in the zone and you just, just it's, it's the coolest work thing. Working the wave. And I know you, I mean, your kids probably know how to do this. Correct. They know how to do that. <laughs> but it was pretty cool for me. At eight, they could do that. Yeah. I'm 53. 53. And we finally got a boat big enough and a board big enough to support me. It, it is the, very, the, it is very important that you get, like, you got to get a wave. People talk, yeah. people have a little tiny wave. But you, you're not going to surf with a tiny wave. And then the bigger you are, you have to have a bigger board. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Yes, sir. In the years past, uh, my, my buddy Craig, they've got this lake house down at Lake Martin. And he had, had an older, smaller boat. And then they had a small surfboard, which, of course, his kids weighed like 115 pounds. Perfect. You know, and so they were, so he, he ended up getting a new board a few years ago, a new boat, one of these like, Mac boat. Daddy boats, yeah, Master Crafts, and then you fill the thing up where it's the ballast up with it, water, it kicks the waves. And it's then, amazing how much you don't know, like the, the vernacular son, and his, verbiage. His son played football at Auburn, and he got to be pretty big. He's like linebacker, so they had to get a bigger board for him. Oh, but yeah. anyway, I was able to do it. Super fun. No tricks yet. No. Can what? you do any tricks? Three sixty. Do three sixty. I mean, you can ride it up, ride it down. You can flip your feet, you know, opposite. You can you can do all kinds of different. But I mean, it's. It's not like a it, – there's only so much you can do on the wave. I mean, because mm -hmm. obviously you're right behind the boat. But we've – I mean, I've surfed with Lindsay on my shoulders. I mean, we've done all kinds of fun. You we should try that. Kids. I'm not going to try with that. mom on your shoulders, dude? I saw, I saw a guy on Instagram eating a pizza and drinking a beer. <laughs> <laughs> have, you se have you seen any of them – have you seen any of them, like, drive the boat, put it on cruise control, oh, hop off, yes. surf the wave, surf back on the back of the boat, and then – Jump back on. I've seen one go wrong. Yeah. Where he he jumped back to surf, oh. and then he fell off the the wave. Yep. And then the boat just kept going. Yeah. I've seen and some of those, And no one too. was on the boat. He was just surfing by himself. Because if you surf behind, you can surf yeah, yeah. right out. And if you, as long as you lean yeah. back, you can, I, you can put the edge of the board on the top of the ramp. Well, I've hit, ramp. The, I've hit the ramp before. <laughs> that's not good. Don't do that. <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost busted his face on that. Yeah, let's not, let's not hit the ramp I'm, again, I'm by the totally way. I'm totally YouTubing this. So the guy's driving the boat. Yeah. Put it in. Put Which that's the cool. Like his boat, he could like when I drove for him. He it's just on had cruise already, control. All I had to do is go like that, and it just automatically went to the exact. Just setting. push it forward. Yep, that's it. And then you can go back and surf. Like get on, get your board, put it on the front of the ramp in the back, and then ease off, surf, come back up, jump back on, you're off. Man, these guys. Are the guys. foil boards are the next yeah. coolest thing you've ever seen. Well, I, I saw I did, you doing that. Doing that this summer was the coolest thing ever. I mean, that that was the biggest. Does that you have a remote control in your hand? No, they have some that have that. We didn't. I, we didn't have that one. Those the ones that have them, those are like fifteen grand. That's just okay. craziness. But this the foil boards are the hard. It's way harder than surfing. Uh, it's it's way harder balance. It's like if because when you lean back when you surf, you you put all your weight in your back foot. If you do that with the foil board, it comes out of the water and it just throws you. It just it's okay. like a that thing's like a bucking bronco. You got to learn how to ride that thing. I mean, it's hard. Is it does it have a propeller at the it's bottom? It's got a foil at the bottom, and it's right, you know, towards the back end of the board, and it makes it really heavy. But you have to, you have to really stay balanced and keep it flat. Mm -hmm. But if you pump, it goes like you lean back, it comes up and comes out of the water, you know, two or three feet, and then you lean forward and it comes down, and you can ride it. You can pump it out beside the boat. That's how you get the power with that one, and uh, like you can pass the boat. You can go in front of the boat. You could go from behind where the waves are, and you can ride off into somebody else's wave and jump in their wake with that thing. I mean, that is crazy. It's nuts. Yeah, it's really that's it's awesome. it's really cool. Well, well, I did. I was trying to when you sent me the video of you doing it. I, I couldn't. Even, I was trying to figure out what in the world was going on. I was you were too. like out of the water. Yes, I, <laughs> trust me, I was too. That that was take four hundred and sixty seven. I mean, I, I I was saying words under the water that I couldn't say over the uh, words outside of the water. I was so ticked <laughs> off about not being able to get that stupid thing. Yeah. Like I was so mad. But <sighs> hey, so. You want to dive into our Bible story today? Let's get it, brother. So I got, I got, I picked some interesting stories today. You feel very, you, you, you seem very excited. Yeah, this, this is craziness, but 
Luke 8, verse 40 and following, there's, there's two different stories here. Uh, Jairus' daughter is sick, and he comes to Jesus and begs him to come lay hands on his daughter and heal him. And so Jesus is going to, to his house to lay hands on his daughter and, and heal him. Uh, and in the course of them going, they find out that the, the daughter's dead. Dad. Like, she's passed away. She's 12 years old. Now, now how old is Leah? 12. So I was thinking, okay, you're going you're gonna to you're gonna relate to this story because she's 12. Yeah. Well, on the way to his house, there's this huge crowd of people. I mean, I mean, this huge following had already taken place, and so people just were coming to Jesus to be healed. So they're walking through the crowd, and, and this woman reaches and touches the edge of Jesus' cloak, and she's healed. She had 12, 12 years of, of bleeding, 12 years of, of illness and sickness, and then Jesus says, who touched me? And then Peter's like, Jesus, like, <laughs> the whole crowd's we're, we're, touching you. Yeah. But then Jesus says, no, I felt power. Somebody Leave. touched me. Yeah. So he's, he's kind of trying, he's calling out the person who ever touched me, and he probably knew who it was. But so then probably. She, she fesses up to <laughs> it, and, uh, and so she says, you know, she, she, w- she was healed. Well, then Jesus goes on, lays hands on uh, Jairus' daughter, and raises her back to life. <laughs> and which is fascinating that the woman had been sick for 12 years, 12 years of bleeding, and the girl was 12 years old. So that's ironic, significant. Um, but two incredible stories there of the powerful touch of Jesus. So any, any faults right off the bat for you? You know, it, I think one of the coolest stories in the Bible, and I, I, don't, I don't know where it's at, you probably do, is when the is when they have the paralyzed man and the buddies rip open the roof. Oh yeah, Mark chapter two. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's I think that's one of the coolest stories in the Bible. If you're going like just top ten, top fifteen for me, that's that's it because I want to be that friend. I want to be that person in somebody's life that literally would be willing to rip a roof open and throw my buddy's body towards Jesus to say heal him. Like I think that's that's really really cool. But I, I mean, all I think of is just the power. I mean, mm-hmm. the power of a touch, like, and it's, and it's interesting during that story too, people were freaking out. Like what she's dead. She's already dead. Right. She, what, what's the point? But no, nah. don't even bother coming. No. Yeah. She's, that's she's what they said. Dead. Don't come. Like yeah. it, she's dead. She's gone. And Jesus is like, hold on a minute. Nah, she's not gone. So for us, like whatever we're going through and wherever we're at, like, again, it's not gone. It's not, whatever's whatever, however far down you are, whatever you've done, it's not, it's not gone. It can still be fixed. Jesus can still fix something after 12 years. Yeah, you, you said a couple of things there. One is, is Jesus' touch has supernatural power. And so how do we exercise that power? Like how, how do we tap into the supernatural power of Jesus? How have you done it? Well, I think you look at the example of this woman. She exercised her faith by reaching out and, and touching Jesus. And then Jesus wants to know, well, who is it? And then what does he say? He says, your faith has healed you. Interesting. He says, your faith has healed you. He doesn't say, I, I healed you. I he said, your faith. So he's always got the power, but do we have the, the faith to, reach, to out. reach out and touch you? And so it's interesting, I was thinking about this, that Jesus is walking by, and this woman reaches out and touches Jesus. Now, if Jesus was walking by and we had the opportunity to reach out and touch him and reach out and exercise his power, whatever it is, whatever miracle that we need in our lives, but then I got to thinking about it. Well, Jesus is walking by. Jesus tells us, come to me, all you here weary and burdened. Like, all we have to do is reach out. All we have to do is touch him. All, All we have to do is exercise a little faith. But do we have that faith? Do we have the faith as small as a mustard seed to believe that, that God can do the miraculous, that he can heal us, or that he can, you know, open a certain door for us? Some, some pretty powerful stuff. That's good. I wrote that down. I said, do we have the faith to reach out and touch him? And then he wants the lady to testify. Mm-hmm. He wants her to give testimony. 
And I think that's the thing. If God has healed you and God has done something in your life, he wants us to testify. He wants us to, to give him the glory. I, I, I love you and Lindsay sharing your story uh, about going through some difficult times and y'all were willing to talk about it and y'all were willing to testify and, and, and give glory to God that, that you, put him, you put him at the center of your relationship. Let me tell you something. There was nothing more, there was nothing better in church whenever it was weeks ago when you played the video and Lindsay talked because she <laughs> hates that so much. It was, was awesome. Was she like just sitting in her seat cringing? I mean, it was a God thing because she had been waiting to go to the bathroom, but the worship songs were so good. I mean, they were so stinking good that she couldn't go. And then she said she literally was like, all right, all right, after this I had to go. Like when Andrew walked up and then they showed the video of her talking and she was out in the lobby. She wasn't coming back <laughs> in. <laughs> she, she does not. She does not like that. I, I don't love it either. I'm not going to. It's not just, it's just, you know how it is. It's just when you see yourself, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, guys, how you doing? Like, I'd rather, I'd rather see somebody else. Please don't show me. It yeah. was, it was absolutely fantastic. It's hard. But it's, and it's not her, you know, and, I, and we saw, I saw on social media on the family goals, somebody said, bring back the wives. Like, my wife doesn't love that. She doesn't enjoy, she did it. But just like Matt Holiday reached out for his podcast and was like, hey, we'd love to have you and your wife on. And my wife was like, eh, eh, you're solo now. <laughs> like, I did. I did. I did mine with family goals. I'm not. I'm not going to do it we again. We got the pool. <laughs> we, we we can make we it got happen. The pool. We can make it. Ha- Nobody. We might be the only person that's ever interviewed her on a podcast. That's yes, you. and and last. <laughs> 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 she does not. She does not love that. That's not her thing. That's for sure. Well, she did awesome, and I thought that was brilliant of the guys to to show her talking about small groups at church using the podcast. I thought that was, yeah, that was, br- I got to give y'all some props. That was that. all, all yeah, I knew I was, was, was dragged. I was like, wait a minute. I got both of them here. That's not going to happen again. So I was like, all right, let me fill it on in. So that was, that was good. brilliant. Thank you. So I think getting back to our Bible story, exercising the faith, but then also I think the other thing is, is in life, you have to seize the opportunities. Mm-hmm. Like this woman She'd been, no one could heal her. So she's been to every doctor there is. She's tried everything there possibly. You think about people who, who've been to all kinds of doctors. They've probably spent all the money that they have to try. So she, she has no money. She's, she's tried everything. And if you go back to Leviticus, because of her condition, she was ceremonially unclean. So she was unable to worship. She was quarantined from people. So it was a huge step of like this was her one this was her opportunity. Her shot. This was her shot. Like here And she shot it. Jesus is in town. And this is I don't care what people think about me. I don't you know, I'm going for it. And she worked I mean, I, I don't know the backstory, I don't know the situation, but if you ever you ever been to a concert where, where it's like it's like general admission and you're trying to get to the front of the stage and you're like Working through all of these people and you know, few, rubbing, bump, bumping shoulders. Yeah, there's a few fights going on, you know, yeah. back in the day. Uh, which you would have been a great person to go with, by the way, because um, you could have protected me. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but you, you see her working through the crowd, and maybe to the point where she can barely just touch his cloak. Like she doesn't even touch him; she touches his his, his outer garments. I just think, what what are your thoughts on? Season an opportunity. Like, you got an opportunity here, and you don't let it pass. Like, like this is the opportunity. Like, if I don't go for this now, I'm, I'm never going to be able to. And I've, le- I've let opportunities pass when I've felt God nudging me to do something about it. Mm. And that's always a horrible feeling. Like, I felt the need to, like, pray for somebody, pray with someone, and you're like, oh, I really, I want to do it. I want to do it. And then you're like, all right, I chickened out. You know what I'm saying? And so I think. Even even if it's with your family, even if it's with your with your bride, like whoever it is, I think I think we've all we all feel those tugs in our lives of things that we should do and we need to do, and we can feel the Holy Spirit leading us to do something. And this is a perfect opportunity to realize, like, do it because you don't know what will happen. And but we we're all gonna have those those moments, and we're and we're, listen, we're all gonna we're all gonna cower to some of those moments sometimes. And but when you seize it, look what happens. It's pretty mm-hmm. cool. Pretty cool story. Yeah, I would say little little moments and big moments. And that's one of the things we we train our staff and I train the guys in, in men's discipleship. 
if someone ever asks you to pray for them, just pull them aside right now. Hey, let's pray right now. Yeah. Like instead of saying, oh, yeah, I'll pray for you, like just pray right then. Pull them aside. You could be in the church lobby. You could be out on the football field. You could be, you know, at, at the grocery store. And it means the world world to people. Uh, there was a guy, you know, back in the day when I played basketball on the greatest church basketball team of all time. Before you got cut. Yeah, before I got cut. There was a guy from another team. Afterwards, he he was kind of confiding in me. He, his his son was struggling, kind of his high school son. And uh, I don't even remember this, uh, but Jennifer actually had breakfast with his wife yesterday, and she she said that. Um, anyway, when he told me about his son, I pulled him and said, "Let's pray about it right now." So out, outside the gym in the dark, you know. 9 o'clock, 9.30 at night, I, I prayed for his son and prayed for him, and she was telling Jennifer yesterday that that just meant the world to him, that I had, you know, prayed for him, ministered to him, cared for him, and she was saying, no, they go to a different church, and he was saying his, he's never had that opportunity with his own pastor, but he had that opportunity with me. And so I, you just never know the opportunities and but I've I've missed them too. I mean, you know, I missed I'm a bunch. Getting my hair cut, and I'm and God saying, "You need to share with so, this lady. You need to share with this lady." And, and then I don't do it. Yeah. So you, you know, one you thing miss that those opportunities. One thing that I started doing that I don't I don't I don't know I don't know. So people say all the time, and people will share on group text messages, which is nowadays, which is the type of thing to share about something that's going on in their lives and the struggle, and they want prayer and. I don't know why, but it just drives me nuts when we send pray, praying hands emoji. Like, I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know why, and it probably shouldn't, but I, I try to take those moments now and text the person individually a prayer, like literally a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, like I lift up so-and-so to you right now. They're going through a tough time because I don't want to be the person that says I'm praying for you. And doesn't do it. And I want you to hear it. I want you to feel it. I want you to, you know, stop. And I want people, I want you to know that like you were, you were, people, it was worth it. You were worth to take time for. I mean, I have a buddy that had a, that I barely know the guy. I mean, I, I know uh, Charlie Warner. He went at Georgia. He's a strong Christian guy. Just awesome dude. And the other night I was about to go to bed. I know he's in San Francisco and he started camp and he just had a baby boy. And I know he's got a lot going on and I prayed for him and his family, but I, I just sent it to him. And I, and I, it, the opposite side of that too is: am, am I, am I doing this to be boastful? Like I, I'm, I'm not trying to do this to be boastful, but I just, I wanted you to know that I'm praying for you, really, and this is what I'm praying for. I, I was like, I'm praying that your family continues to be a light in San Francisco because it's a hard place to be a light. Like I know you guys got struggles. I know your wife's here in Georgia with the baby and your training camp, and but I just, I, I want to be action you know i want to do it i want to i want to i want to seize those opportunities and a lot of times i don't think i do it when i just say hey i'm praying for you so it's kind of an accountability thing mm -hmm. i, I want to do that with my wife when i'm when I'm on the road I, instead of telling her i'm praying for her, like i want to send her a text or pray with her on the phone you know like i don't know i just it's something that i've done that i love i, I love i love it. it it works for me um but i just want them to know it's you know i'm really doing this i, I really am praying for you and taking time for you yeah, whenever I get those texts, hey, pray for this or pray for that, my my response is, I'm going to pray right now. Yeah. And then I'll text them back, just pray. pray. Just pray. Because otherwise, if I say I'm going to do it, it's like I, you, you, I lose, won't do you it. lose track of all, all the texts. ADD boy over here just everything. Mew, mew. Another text, what? What happened? But, you know, there's some small things. Like one of my, one of my best friend's dad's in the hospital, and uh, – uh, Jamie and I went and saw him yesterday and, and prayed over him. And, and I got a text from my buddy last night saying, man, it meant the world. Like, it lifted my dad's spirits that you came by the hospital and, and prayed for him. And I think just doing little things, like if, if God nudges you to go do something, see, seizing those opportunities. And I don't always do it, but I just felt, if I, if, if, if I feel led to go to the hospital, then I'm going to, I don't always feel led to go, but. And by the I'm way, just go, you seize, know? seize those opportunities throughout your day to, to praise him. Like people talk about prayer life and it's awkward. And of course, like there's going to be times when prayer is awkward, but 
it's just a just have a have a conversation. You're driving in the car down the road. Turn the music off. Mm. Put your phone down and just pray. Just tell God about your day. What's going on? Talk about talk about it out loud to Him. Like it's before you before you eat a meal. Just give thanks. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, Lindsay Lindsay. She, I drive her nuts because she's like, I'm, we don't need a 30 minute prayer before we eat a meal. She's like, I'm hungry. I want to eat. And so land the plane. Like I get, yes, land I, the plane. I catch myself all the time. I'll start praying and I'm praying for X, Y, and Z. And then I can feel the heat coming off yeah. of Lindsay over there. She's like, I'm ready to eat. Um, you know, but, I, but again, I tell my kids all the time, like, just give thanks when you wake up, just give thanks. Yeah. Like find those, find those moments throughout the day where we can just for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, like. Thank God for what he's doing, for what he did, and, you know, the ways in life he can make himself more known and more present and nudges that I can take to to make my life more like what he wants it to be. Yeah, really, really prayer's not complicated, and it shouldn't be, oh, God, it's been a while, you know, when something difficult's happening, you know, the blue lights are coming up behind you, and you say, oh, God, help me get out of this. It should be an ongoing conversation. So if something good happens, we praise him. Something bad happens, I mean, he's the first. You know, before we tell anybody else, I kind of go to go to him with it and keep keep that conversation going. So uh, let's see. Let's wrap this up. Speaking of landing the plane, you want to land the plane on this on this <laughs> bad boy? Now, my my last thought is Jesus can bring what is dead back to life, and so uh, Jairus's daughter was dead he bring he breathes life into her brings her back to life and so no matter how far like your marriage could be dead god could bring it back to life your finances could be bankrupt and dead he he could bring it back like your health could be like <laughs> you know god what are your thoughts on that they they jesus can take something that is dead and bring it back to life i've seen it um, I've seen it throughout my life when things are spiraling out of control and you're like, oh, this is a this is this is gone. I mean, you talked about me and Lindsay struggling with our marriage. I, I've been there and I've seen him not only restore it, restore it better than it was. So I think I, I believe that 100 percent. I mean, I've, I've lived it. I've, I've felt it. I felt it with my neck injury. I felt it with so many different times in my life when it was there was a reason to be upset. There was a reason to be um worried but i've seen god take it i mean people i I tell people all the time with my neck like the best day of my life the best day one of the best days of my life is when i broke my neck on that day i lost millions of dollars the sport that i played since i was six years old for every fame all that comes with it like i lost that all at all that all at once like and then now god said to me i mean it's what's what he's shown me is like all right I'm going to give it to you again, but what are you going to do with it? Like, and it's been a, it's been a huge blessing and it's been a huge transformation of how I handle the way I handle. I, mean, I look at Jesus and you talk about crowds. Like this dude had to deal with people flying at him all over the place. People, uh, be, oh, somebody always wants something from me. Craziness is going on. Yeah. He had it going on like crazy. Every time he spoke it, people were all up in his grill. Fix me, help me do this, do that. Preachers want to whine about being uh, tired. And I always got to do the X, Y. And look at, look at Jesus. That was his whole life. His whole ministry just became about crowds and people and everyone wanting something from him. And so how are you going to respond? How are you going to handle those things? So I'm, I'm definitely on board. So why, why do you say that the day you broke your neck is the best day of your life? Because the Bible says, be still and know that I am God. And the peace that comes with being still and knowing that he is God, the peace that comes with knowing he's in control. When you lose everything that you were pursuing, listen, from when I was six years old, that's what I wanted. Like, that's what I was going to go get. And um, when you lose that in a snap, you know, what, what, what's, who's, what's your friends in your life for your right reason? Like, who's, who's in your life for the right reasons? What, where, where are we going next? I don't know. No clue, no degree. Definitely didn't think about doing the media. I've told you that before. I didn't like the people in the media. That wasn't an option. Like that wasn't a thing in my head. But okay, now what are you gonna do? Do you have faith? Like, are you gonna trust me? Yeah, I am. So it was. You look back now, like I'm a better dad. I'm a better husband. Like 
a better follower. Like I, everything about my life is better because of that happening to me. And that doesn't happen at that age for me. It doesn't, it doesn't happen at 23. It might have happened and might have matured, but <laughs> I mean, looking at now, it's taken a long time to get where I'm at. Like I can't imagine how long it would have taken without something coming in my life to force that to happen. I love, I love your perspective on it. I was thinking about Job, and not not that you went through everything that Job no. went through, but but the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And so, I, lo- I love that you reached it one time, and maybe maybe you didn't handle it in the proper way. But now now God has blessed you with it again, and and how you have this God is a God of second chances, and you're trying to be the the best steward of what He has in, entrusted to you. I think it's a Pretty, pretty powerful thing. With a lot of screw-ups along the way, though. Yeah. A lot. We're not perfect. We don't expect you to be. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's Family Goals podcast with Davey Pollock and Pastor Jay. Jesus is passing by us every day. He is so close. Even when you feel so far away from God, he is just an arm's length away or a prayer away. It was the faith of the woman that saved her. All she had to do was reach out and touch Jesus' cloak. Acts 17.27 says this, His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards Him and find Him, though He is not far from any one of us. So some of you might are sick or need healing or maybe even need forgiveness of sins. Reach out to God. He is so close. It was his purpose for us to seek after him and find him and for our relationship to be restored with him. Whatever you're going through, seek after Jesus. Davy's story about his injury is so powerful and so encouraging because of his perspective. It took a career ending injury for David to slow down, to be still and to seek God. In what ways do you need to seek after God and reach out to him? He is in control of every situation. Thank you again for listening to the Family Goals podcast, and we'll catch you next week.